All right, welcome back to my channel, Cosmic Insight Astrology. I am your co-pilot, Christina. Today I'm here, the second part of Uranus-Jupiter conjunction uh, for all signs. But however, this is the third part of my Uranus-Jupiter uh, forecast, because I did a mundane before as well. And I'm going to put that in the comment section below. So guys, if you have a Libra rising, secondly, Libra, Sun and Moon, this is your Uranus-Jupiter conjunction uh, forecast for April 20th, when it's going to happen. And if you saw my video, then you know this is a very rare occasion, especially in Taurus. Um, so your rising sign is all about you. Your sun sign is most likely about your ego, your career, uh, the path you are working on. And the moon sign is your mother, you as a nurturer, your subconscious, your fears and your emotions. So let's go and let's get uh, into this conjunction. First of all, you also have to know it's going to make a Earth Grand Trine with Black Moon Lilith in Virgo and Ceres in Capricorn. And Uranus Jupiter conjunction also going to sextile with Mars in Pisces. So it's going to happen in your eight house Libras. Eight house anything to do with taboos, anything to do with sex, tax, death. Uh, other people's money, shared resources. It is um, medical, male practice. It is the house of abortion, a house of pregnancy as well. And uh, it has to do something with inheritance and insurance money as well. So there is definitely a sudden shift, an unexpected gain in shared resources and finances. You might going to get pregnant unexpectedly or your significant other. You might going to actually uh, have an inheritance and you didn't even know you have an uncle in a foreign country and died and going to leave everything on you. It could do something to do with wills and trust and insurance money. You might going to find the best, the most amazing opportunity to, to create a trust or, or to, to actually um, have a trust like an inheritance. You might going to be able to, to have a, a psychological breakthrough as well, because this is breakthroughs. And because of eight house rules psychology as well, and intimacy as well, you know, you might going to have a breakthrough uh, to understand your psyche and understand uh, uh, your intimate blockage over that. But uh, investment could be really, really amazing. For example, if you invested uh, in cryptocurrency, perhaps, or anything to do with Jupiterian energy, maybe aviation, maybe uh, foreign currency, it might going to expand load and it is uranium energy it could bring in a landfall of money for you uh, your personal pro power actually going to change there is a major transformation over here and the way you perceive yourself it's going to change because your subconscious is changing and as you know black moon lilith is in your 12th house so actually and ceres is going to be in your fourth house so it's going to activate your water horses. It is an earth grand train, but, and it's a very stable, really, really tangible, uh, looking for and seeking for security, but it's in the water horses because of the 12th, 4th, uh, and 8th house are water horses. So there is a lot going on on underneath the surface in your subconscious a lot of thing is hidden black moon lilith in the 12th house could actually explore some kind of hidden suppressed psychological issues for you and uh, there could be some kind of subconscious healing it could be spiritual healing it could be like you are 
ready to take on to a retreat or open a retreat center, open a center where you can heal people with addiction, where you can actually have the underprivileged people. You are capable to confront your fears. And, you know, if there was secret and you avoided things, right now it's coming to a surface and you're capable to face it and actually tame the, the beast within. So, but you know, that is definitely an unconventional approach for your spiritual health. So something which is uh, you haven't been before. So if you haven't uh, tried ayahuasca before and you do it right now, you know, that is your unconventional uh, method um, right now. And service in the fourth house for you guys, going to be and going to do something with your family, with your family dynamic, with your living situ situation. So this is in Capricorn and Capricorn ruled by Saturn. So it's a very cold sign, but Ceres over here, the nurturing mother, right? Is seeking for, you know, like the Ceres over here, almost like the single mother who provide for the whole entire family. Ceres in Capricorn loves uh, to have stories like a love language. So, so, um, show me what you do for me kind of situation. And in the fourth house, uh, anything to do with your roots, with your home situation, restructuring your home, maybe, you know, care for a new family member or some older one, because stress in Capricorn means some older one, and you have to nurture your, your uh, old elderly father or mother or take them into your home. Um, it could be also an amazing opportunity to have some kind of growth through a real estate investment. So you might go into sell a house and um, and it's going you're gonna prosper out from it. Or it could be like you buy a house from someone um, who who give it to you for the price he she bought it and it is way under market so you can prosper out from that. But nurturing within the home and family dynamic, there is a lot of uh, energy where you are capable to get love from, from the family members, capable to get love from your elderly parents or, or you know, any family members, as I said before. Um, all right, so what else is happening? And Mars going to sextile uh, with this Uranus and Jupiter conjunction and Mars is in the sixth house and it's in Pisces. So it's not that strong because Mars is a fiery energy and Pisces is a water sign. And But in the sixth house, it's seeking actually for new regime. So you are uh, want to actually get here. You are, you want to, to go and get a new regime. For example, a new membership in, um, in, um, maybe a gym or a yoga membership or open up a nutrition uh, studio or, or, you know, a juice bar. And it's all going to be supported and it's all going to bring in money. If you would like to have a rental property because of, you know, it's also going to sex type with Ceres in the fourth house. So if you would like to open a rental property, it could be amazing or buy a rental property, if, if you would like to have a new tenant, maybe are you going to adopt a, a new puppy uh, and it's uh, going to lift up your life um, and um, going to maybe motivate you to work out more because you have to walk with that uh, new um, puppy. So definitely there is a difference right now. And you know, you're going to become more energetic. Um, um, and you're going to take care of your health. You're going to watch what you eat. It's going to be really important because Uranus, Jupiter in Taurus, it's the, the food that we put in our mouth and it's sextile with Mars and Pisces, you know, that is holistic healing method. Maybe you're going to have a lot of herbs implement in your daily um, uh, regime. So yeah, definitely. That is like... Um, you know, you're going to address any kind of challenge at workplace or any kind of health issues. You're going to go for a second opinion if you have to, but you're going to be assertive and pursue wellness and your fitness goals. 
it's going to become your passion right now and you're not going to give up you're capable to focus uh, on your transformation so that's good herbal remedies so you know first of all yarrow for you would be really good yarrow is a very pungy earthy energy and it is belong from the eighth house because of it's really good for any kind of um, um, uterus or 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 ovarian or any kind of female uh, reproductive system uh, issues. It's also good and it's uh, um, for example fever. So it's good for fever. It's good for yarrow. Also good for. Um, if you get like a skin scape because of your roller bathing and you you fall, so it's really good for that kind of injuries and heals them quickly. And because of you have everything, the earth grand trine in, in your water houses and water houses are very psychic and spiritual. Magwort is going to give you an amazing lucidity and uh, it's supporting your intuition and dreams. So Magwort would be really great during this time to, to, to have a tea or, you know, somebody smokes Magwort. I'm not saying you should, but, you know, uh, yes, you can smoke Magwort. And gemstone, because of the 8th and the 12th house are involved, obsidian would be really great because obsidian is, it's again the, um, protect against the, the substantial uh, field and also it's uh, it uh, protects you again the psychic um, you know um, not just blockage but um, attack psychic attack so that could be really really great um, then you know black moon lilith in virgo you can actually get some kind of plantain but plantain leaves because of it helps and support Supports overcoming challenges related to perfectionism and criticism. So self-criticism. So it's going to give you more self-worth and make you relax as well. And, um, you know, another black stone could be black tourmaline or black onyx you can use during this uh, uh, conjunction to protect yourself. And Mars in Pisces, you know, you want to, Mars is very, very active and Pisces doesn't want to move. It likes its Zen serenity. So chamomile and lavender tea would be really, really good for you during this conjunction. And I'm going to give you also a quote and I'm going to give it from Yuni, uh, Rumi. Don't grieve. Anything you lose comes wrong in an other form. So because of Uranus and Jupiter are going to happen in your eighth house. Obviously, that's why I choose uh, this quote for you, chosen this uh, quote for you, because Uranus and Jupiter could actually bring in a sudden uh, inheritance, right? But sudden inheritance means a sudden death of someone, most likely. So, you know, listen and look into your dreams because someone might going to come back in another form to contact you. All right, I'm going to change the black background and we're going to go to Scorpio, guys. If I find Scorpio here. Yes, I find Scorpio. Okay, if you have a Scorpio rising, secondly, sun and moon, this is your Jupiter-Uranus conjunction uh, forecast, astrology forecast for April 20th. 21st but you know jupiter uranus it's already within orb six weeks before so uh, if you have any planet in taurus between 15 and 25 degrees it's going to be emphasized or actually any kind of planet you know like between if you if you have it in earth sign because we have a, a grand trine uh, during this conjunction with Black Moon Lilith in Virgo and Ceres in Capricorn, this Jupiter Uranus conjunction going to make a grand trine. And it's also going to make a sextile with Mars in Pisces as well. And for you, Scorpio rising, 
sun and moon. So you are watching it for rising if it's everything is about you and the timing and you know what area of the life it's going to happen. And if you're watching for your sun or moon, the sun is your career, the sun representing anything to do with a father figure, anything to do with your ego, the path you are working on, and the moon is your subconscious, your mother figure, the way you are nurture yourself, you know, your your client as well. So yes, that's um, what it is. So it's going to happen in your seventh house, Scorpio. Seventh house, anything to do with your relationship. Um, this is the, the, the house of Peace, the house of the significant others. This is the house of a, a marriage partner. It is the house of one-on-one -on -one relationship, business partnership, and legal matters as well. Uh, the alliances. So the partnership is changing. You might go into some of you if you have a very bad marriage or relationship. It could bring in a blessing ending. But on the other hand, it could also bring in an unexpected new relationship, which is going to sweep you off of your um, um, feet. If you are not married, but you live in a relationship for a long time, but somehow you're not married, you might go in to make a decision and get married or, you know, like renew your wolves, for example. If you have any legal matters going on, somebody is suing you or someone you swing someone. This is an amazing opportunity to get the court on your side and winning uh, the situation, winning the lawsuit, for example. Uh, so that is if you would like to have a business partnership or clientele. So if you have any social media account, YouTube, podcasting, because Jupiter also podcasting and publishing as well, it could bring in a huge sales of your books or, you know, like, like uh, bring in a lot of clients and followers. So new connections, but also, you know, as I said, sudden breakups as well, but you know, the breakups going to be blessed because Jupiter is there and Jupiter is giving its blessing. Um, yes, it could bring in something like, uh, like you, you going to, to be part of uh, some kind of um, a protest, for example, for the greater good. Um, so contracts and new agreements are definitely possible, but it's coming out of nowhere and you will be really, really pleased with it. And because of it's going to try and black moon Lilith in your 11th house, 11th house is your long-term uh, wishes and dreams, and it is also... Uh, money, the earned money from your career. It is also luck, the house of luck and your social network. So back moon Lilith over here, training with this beautiful Jupiter and Uranus uh, conjunction, it could actually bring in a, maybe a new lover, but it could be someone who is for a foreign country because Jupiter could be a foreigner but also from your social network, and it could be a higher hierarchy, so someone who are uh, not from the same class you are. Uh, definitely your social circle and your community is going to become uh, unconventional and you're going to explore. For example, you might going to actually have a, a seasonal um not take it, but you know, like like um, get into a club um, or a social network where you have to pay um, like seasonal or annual fee for it um, to be part of that uh, high um, association somehow. Um, but as could be activism. So as I said, because of Uranus could be something to do with protest and, uh, and because of the 11th house could be something with group uh, and social network and social uh, network activism. So it could be like you're going to become empowered and, and part of that kind of activism, group activism. Um, then, um, but as could happen, your long-term goals and your aspiration is going uh, through 
uh, some kind of transformation, but the transformation is sudden and the transformation going to be positive. So if you leave something behind, there is something already, something new, which is actually serving you better and giving you more opportunities, more prosperous uh, in this case. And then we have Ceres in your third house. Third house, anything to do with your communication, with your neighborhood, with your close relationship. You know, like this is your younger sibling, short distance traveling, um, neighborhood community, anything to do with communication, skill-based study. So let's see what can happen over here. Ceres is... Um, uh, nurturing but nurturing uh, in a way like it is acting on so it is serving others so you can actually create a, a community garden or be part of some kind of um, activism over here which is serves your neighborhood um, it could be like you are you are creating a children's garden. You going to start to to uh, interact with your neighbors and talk to them more, or you know maybe build together a beehive or or a library or anything like. But you know like definitely active community project. Um, definitely growth through learning because the third house is skill based study. So you might go into um, do your website or, you know, the, uh, start like online schools and you are recording your online schools right now, you're going to definitely go short and long distance travel as well. So this both going to be actually involved. And um, there is um, some kind of great news with education. You might going to have the funding for, for your, your study, you know, like you didn't have money to... To, to take that astrology course or that AI course you wanted to, but right now you will have the money for that. And Mars is in your fifth house. Mars is in your fifth house, really active in Pisces, something to do with, with creative project, artistic project. It is sextiling with Uranus and Jupiter conjunction. So it is to do something with, and also uh, Mars sextiles with Ceres as well in the third house. So has to do something uh, with your creative project, anything to do, get an um, agent, a manager, uh, start uh, a, a writing project, a script writing, um, maybe start to make jewelries or sport clothes, like you want to make clothes for golfers or basketball players, something like that, but anything could be really good which is creative and which is actually linked to Mars so it could be linked to Mars like um, it is the activity or the warrior or uh, Pisces which is the creative side the artistic side of that or you are writing actually a book about wars so it could be that as well you're also going to be very assertive with, with your romantic life as well. So you're going to initiate the romance. You're going to initiate dating. And the way you're going to deal with your children, you're going to become active with them, but active in an artistic way. So you might going to go with them, you know, to for a painting class or, or, or a, a creative writing class, but definitely be with them and active with them but on a uh, on a way of like Pisces would be active so definitely brings in photography maybe you're gonna go to nature and take a lot of photos with your children um you know it could be some kind of conflict in your personal expression and in your love affairs because Mars and Pisces is not necessarily really strong and it's because it's, it's going to oppose actually Black Moon Lilith in the 11th house so it could be some kind of personal conflict. Um, okay, so what are the, the herbal remedies? So anything to do with rose petals, rose water, hot worm berry, because Mars in Pisces, hot worm berry is really good for circulation and, uh, and you know, lower blood pressure, for example. So those one is because Mars in Pisces for you in the fifth house, fifth house rules the heart, you know, because it's ruled by Leo. So definitely it could be 
those um, um, herbal remedies and the roast petal, it's always good even to eat it, you know, put that in your salad or, or it's opening your heart chakra. It is actually um, giving you harmony and, and because it symbolizes love and compassion and, you know, it is the uh, flower of relationship. So it could be really great for that. Rose quartz is amazing. And I would use Lapush Lazuli as well for you, Scorpios, because Lapush Lazuli rules Jupiter. Jupiter and Juno get married on a Lapush Lazuli stone. And uh, it is the higher intellect, right? It is like, like connection with the divine energy and understanding anything to do with relationship and loyalty as well. So, and what else can you use? Well, you know, Black Moon Lilith in Virgo, it could bring in some kind of additional, because it's going to oppose Mars, so some kind of conflict uh, with your relationship. So uh, you can use Valerian root uh, for tension as well. Mm, and uh, yeah, I would use those. Uh, gemstones for you guys, besides Lapush Lazuli, anything to do with some kind of red coral, red garnet could be really good for this conjunction and for this grand trine. Um, Amethyst as well, because Amethyst is giving you protection and clarify your thoughts and, you know, like uh, give, giving you protection against obsession or maybe addiction. So it could be really good. And then for you guys, I'm giving you a quote from Bob Marley. The truth is everyone is going to hurt you. You just got to find the ones worth suffering for. Because of, you know, the Mars and, and um, Ceres, um, um, what was that? Yes, Ceres was, no, Black Moon Lilith. Uh, the Mars and Black Moon Lilith um, opposition for you. And um, because of Mars is in the fifth house could give you some kind of conflict in, with your romantic partner. So that's the quote for you. Okay, I'm going to change the light here the background and i'm gonna go to sagittarius if yes here it is all right sagittarius rising sun and moon but firstly rising because it's all about you it's about your body it's about the area it's taking place at and it's gonna happen in your sixth house sagittarius and it's going to take a beautiful grand uh, trine Earth Grand Trine uh, with Black Moon Lilith in Virgo, Ceres in Capricorn. And it's also going to sextile Mars in Pisces for you well. Uh, all right, so Jupiter, Uranus in the sixth house. Jupiter is blessing, Uranus is the unexpected. We were talking about that many times. Jupiter is uh, abundance. Jupiter is generosity. Uranus is innovative. Uranus is technology. So there is change at your work or your work, I, uh, work environment. Anything to do also with your job roles as well, because it's going to try and black moon Lilith in Virgo, so you might going to get promoted. So, and because of its training, Ceres in Capricorn, with the promotion, Capricorn is in your second house, brings in more money, so more earning. Also, that it's going to go be a major change with your health practice, with your daily routine. You're going to really watch what you are putting into your mouth, what you are eating. You're going to, to nurture your body, Ceres in Capricorn, and it's training, and you're going to stick with it. It is a sudden change. Maybe you're going to have some kind of health difficulties before, and there is no other option than to change and go all holistic and looking for your wellness. So definitely breakthrough in wellness. If you would like to start to lose weight, get rid of diabetes, start plant-based or carnivore or whatever diet you want, but you know, this is the time right now. If you would, maybe right now, you're going to adopt a puppy suddenly, just out of nowhere. Maybe you're just going to buy a new home and you're going to rent it out right away, rent a property. Why? Because of it's going to, uh, sextile Mars in your fourth house in Pisces. So it is like 
okay, I'm going to be um, very assertive and I'm going to go for the Mars also rules the eighth house, you know, uh, Scorpio. So that is uh, anything to do with um, mortgages. So it could be like I'm getting the mortgage right now because I want to, to, to buy a rental property. Maybe you're going to actually rent out a house or have a new tenant or have a new roommate as well. And as I said, it could bring in a new small animal as well to you. Um, but definitely it's going to happen in the sixth, uh, the, the 10th and the second house. So that is money and work and career for you guys which is changing, changing suddenly. It could bring in reputation and honor for you. You might going to be recognized if you have a social media account overnight, you know, like your clientels or, or you're going to get a blessed clientels in um, who are willing to support you and help you. Or, or, you know, you're going to have a lot of followers on social media account. It could bring that as well. Um, so anything to do with uh, ethics and power dynamic could change. And it could be a little bit of confrontation over here. But, but because it's a trine, it's going to be actually like, okay, so should I take this job? You know, like I feel like it's not necessarily uh, my way of living or working. But if you are taking it from inside, you are capable to make a change and stay, um, um, you know, uh, keep your integrity and make a change in the nest. So, so yes, if you are taking the job, you can actually succeed. Um, empowerment through addressing social taboos and in professional settings especially so if you have a career as a mayor as a district uh, um, well, district leader uh, someone who is in politics so it could be one of your your job right now or one of your uh, purpose right now and definitely major transformation in public status and reputation. You might even going to get married and that's the, the, the reputation change and the public state status changing over here. So the way you are approaching your career, I know it's going to become very unconventional. You might going to use a lot more technology or AI and, you know, um, yeah, AI could be definitely invested in here. Okay, what else is happening here? Um, Ceres is going to be in your second house. Ceres is nurturing your finances and your finance, uh, finances, uh, the resources actually, your personal resources. And because it's in Capricorn, it's very, very structured. So it's managing really well your possessions and building well slowly. So growth for sure during this grand train is available for you and you will really like it because you love financial security. Um, balancing out your material uh, security and uh, also uh, something to do with environment as well because Taurus could be, because it's an earth grand train and Ceres involved over here so you could become an environmental activist because Uranus could be an activist, right? So environmental activist. And Mars in the fourth house, as I said, something to do with your family, with your family matters, uh, perhaps purchasing uh, rental properties, resolving domestic conflicts between people. Uh, you're going to improve the, the way you are living, your living situation, and you might going to uh, improve your, your uh, uh, movie theater room, you know, because Mars in, in Pisces, it could be that. Or, you know, as I said, just going for that mortgage and you're going to ask for it and ask, and it's given, so you are capable to, to buy something. Um, you're capable to to renovate your kitchen, for example, because of Fort Hose's kitchen, Mars is fire, or, or put maybe a, a fireplace in your home. So it could be that story as well for you. 
Okay, guys, what else? You know, remedies. Let's talk about remedies for you here. Peppermint is going to energize you. And definitely it's good for mental clarity and, you know, to keep your work test because of Uranus going to be crazy at work for you, at your workhouse. So uh, you're going to have a lot of responsibility with that. And if you would like to get more clarity and energize yourself, definitely uh, peppermint or ginger as well ginger as well because ginger is always activating and and stimulating uh, ginkgo biloba stimulate as well uh, your your uh, and energize your your mental clarity also rosemary if you would like to even just cut some rosemary and put that in a vase and you know the smell of rosemary is boosting your mental health and mental clarity gemstones you know it could be anything to do with with uh, citrine um, which is activating also activating the your your ability to think and process information um, you can put a huge citrine next to your table you can use resins like ember or or frankincense to 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 uh, focus for focus and ancient focus and it is also clear all the negative energy from your your environment your work environment um, you can drink dandelion i say it to everyone because dandelion actually rules the liver and because uh, uranus is uh, connected with prometheus and the liver right because of the eager eight his liver because he gave away the fire to humans um, and because of Jupiter also rules river dandelion would be and milk is still an amazing herb during this uh, conjunction um, you can also use always onyx as well and black onyx could be great uh, but any kind of onyx but black onyx is good to to get rid of psychic attacks uh, but it also gives you physical stamina as well because of Ceresism, Capricorn could uh, actually rely on black onyx. All right, guys. And I'm going to give you also a quote and it's going to be from Gandhi. The best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. Six houses, the service of others. Okay. Let's move the slide over here and be going to go for Capricorn. Okay. Where is Capricorn? Hmm. I hope I have Capricorn. There he is. Oh no. You know what, I'm going to put that on for Capricorn. Okay, I didn't download it, the Capricorn, but here, here is the Capricorn sign. So if you have a Capricorn rising, sun and moon, uh, this is your Uranus, Jupiter conjunction, astrology forecast. And as I said before, you know, um, you are watching that for your rising because it's all about you then and you know the part of the area real estate where it's going to take place it's gonna be your fifth house uh, which is uh, anything to do with children creativity joy happiness romance investment and sudden gain like like lottery winning or winning as well so and it is a grand um, trine going to be Uranus, Jupiter going to make a grand trine with Black Moon, Lilith in Virgo and Ceres in Capricorn. And it's also going to sextile Mars in Pisces. Uh, so as I said, Jupiter, Uranus in your fifth house, Jupiter uh, in the fifth house, it's bringing in blessings for you. Maybe you're going to get pregnant or your significant other uh, is pregnant it could bring in uh, some amazing new opportunity for a child 
it could actually also make your child rebellious. If you have especially teenagers, they can act up during this conjunction. But joy and happiness. So it could bring in maybe some new creative projects, some innovative projects, something to do with AI, for example. If you invested in cryptocurrency, uranium, anything to do with chat GPT, quantum AI, uh, it might going to explode and pay off significantly. So you're going to be very, very happy about that. Your creativity going to be on peak. You're going to download a lot of creative ideas. You might going to start to write a book which is going to be about, you know, other galaxies or UFOs or or it could be like you are you are planning to build something creative project maybe a, 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 a rocket a spaceship uh, you know like you are planning something maybe you want to become an engineer like a, a computer engineer mm -hmm. but this is good this is good over here because it's bringing windfall of money actually you know not Jupiter. I have that in my Placidus because I have a such rising. So it could bring in a uh, um, lottery winning. So winning something, a sudden windfall of money somehow. Also, you know, this is breakthrough in dealing with children and uh, in parenthood. So as I said, if you have a teenager, you might go into get a breakthrough. And, and if the teenager is rebel, Right now, you are capable to get to them, get, get to the level that they understand your, your concern and, you know, you, the breakthrough is coming from that. But it could bring in an unexpected romantic um, love as well. You know, your love life is changing. Um, Uranus usually it's sudden, unexpected, so be careful if you live in a relationship because it could bring in a cheating and you might didn't want to cheat, you know, but the circumstances, whatever, you know, you drank too much and then you can ruin your marriage, so please be careful. It's going to uh, try and black moon Lilith in your ninth house. Ninth house, anything to do with publishing, foreign matters, uh, long distance traveling, uh, anything to do with visas, passport, uh, um, YouTubing, podcasting, broadcasting, uh, and your older siblings as well, and second marriage as well. So it could actually bring in a romantic partner from abroad, and you can meet the partner on social media or on, on dating sites. And, um, you know, like uh, you have to travel to, to meet the person in, uh, uh, in person. Uh, to see the lover in person, but it could also bring in some kind of new educational goals or some kind of legal matter could turn for your favor because Jupiter is involved, it's unexpected, it's legal matters. If you would like to have a, a non-profit or maybe you want to actually open a school, but it has to be something with higher education or spiritual. So if it is a school uh, based on religion, yes. Otherwise, it's belong from the third house, not the ninth house. But, you know, any, anything to do with spirituality and your philosophy and your belief. So it's changing unexpectedly. You learn something new. Perhaps you're going to see UFOs and, and because of that, you didn't believe in it. And right now your whole beliefs is going to change. Sorry, I had to drink. Ceres is in your first house because it's in Capricorn. Ceres is nurturing, um, but, you know, with, with service. So it wants to do something for the others or wants others to do something for her. And that's the way of love. Uh, your self-identity and your personal appearance is changing. You're going to be um, pampered. So it could be like, uh, but structured pampered. So it's not like a Leonian uh, pamperness, like I'm the Leoness, you know, or the, the queen or the king over here, and I need all the attention. It's Capricornian. So 
So you have your structure. Yes, I have to go to, to gym because of I need to lose weight and I have to go to the sweat lodge because I have to get rid of toxins. So yes, you nurture yourself, you pamper yourself, you set up massages or for others who you love. But because it's in the first pose, it's all about you, actually. Um, and, um, you know, the way you are taking care of yourself, it's, it's different right now. It is like... Uh, I need to get lost a little bit. I don't need to be that Capricornian, always in control kind of person. I I cannot do everything on my own. Nurturing means like I'm going to ask favor from others and Capricorn doesn't like that um, because at least then I can go to have a massage for myself. So those kind of energies. And Mars in your third house, anything to do with short distance traveling, buying a car, anything to do with skill-based study, communication, uh, younger siblings, uh, and, uh, you know, neighborhood as well. So there is some kind of assertive communication going to go behind the scene. You might going to have to um, adjust an issue with a sibling or a neighbor, some kind of conflict over here. You are going to become very passionate to learn something new or sharing information. So you might want to actually create a school, an online school as well. It could be that. Uh, but definitely the way you're going to express yourself, it's going to be creative because it's in Pisces and Pisces is very creative. It's really artistic. Um, yeah, so so that, that could be uh, really good for you. All right, guys, so let's see what kind of herbal remedies I can recommend you. I can recommend you cinnamon because it stimulates your creativity and passion in the fifth house. Also, lemon balm. Lemon balm is e-stress. It's really good and supporting emotional openness and creativity. Uh, uh, emotional openness because fifth house is your love affair as well so that is really great and cinnamon definitely it's cinnamon also i use it during my seances uh, or i put uh, put it in my stimmering pot as well because of not only the smell but it, it brings in prosperity invites prosperity use citrine citrine is abundance fifth house is lottery winning uh, and citrine actually is uh, enhancing your solar plexus because that is something to do with sunrise and sunset colors and citrine is sunrise. So it is um, enhancing joy and happiness in your life. So that would be amazing as well. And right now, because of the Feng Shui flying star, you can put citrine actually on the east side where the rabbit coming from. So that could be great as well. Mm. And the additional aspects like black moonlit in Virgo, uh, you can use slippery M for any kind of trauma with, with indigestion or, or it could be actually also help you with creative expression and uh, with your self-criticism. But slippery M really, it's the way you digest things. So self-criticism also could come from that if you uh, ever read Louise Hay or listened uh, or read her, read her books, you know. Yes, yeah, so it could actually connect it with self-criticism and the way you digest everything. And gemstone could be moss agate because moss agate is uh, encouraging any kind of growth and abundance. And uh, Mossagat is very, very resistant as well. And it could actually help uh, to navigate you through any kind of challenges with grace. So that is a beautiful gemstones. And Mars in Pisces, Echinacea, because Mars in Pisces could bring in some kind of immune uh, issues. Um, so it could be like your immune system can get suppressed and echinacea is really good to strengthen your immune system. Um, so it would be great for that. All right. And I also going to give you a quote and it's going to be Bob Merley again for you guys. Love the life you live, live the life you love. And also I'm going to give you another one, which is Yoda. Uh, my other favorite, 
truly wonderful the, wine, the mind of a child is. It is your fifth house. It is the house of joy and children. So that is your quote. That's what you have to actually uh, uh, reflect on. Okay, changing the signs right now, the background, and we're going to go to Aquarius rising. And I know I had Aquarius here. So here, Aquarius rising, sun and moon. Uh, this is your Jupiter-Uranus conjunction astrology forecast for April 2021. Uh, if you are watching it for your rising, that's all about you all about your body and the circumstances and everything around you, whatever surrounds you. And if you're watching for your son, that's your father figure, that's your career, uh, that's your purpose. And then your moon is your mother figure and your subconscious, your emotions. Um, you know, even traveling, the moon is a backpack, so full of, you know, filled with sand, like Matishia who said. So, yes, uh, so let's see what's going on in April 2021. You know, the orbs are already tied a month before, so it's starting already in uh, March, but it's going to be exact on April 2021st. And um, it's going to happen in Taurus. Taurus is a fixed earth sign, and Jupiter is blessing. Jupiter is abundance, it's gift, it's generosity, it's Santa Claus. Uranus is innovation, change, rebel. Um, Uranus is technology. So, you know, watch my video about the mundane uh, astrology. I'm going to put that below. Uh, and it is a lot of information. You can learn about Black Moon, Lilith in Virgo, Ceres in Capricorn, Mars in Pisces. You can learn all the archetypes over there and see what kind of energy it will bring in. But for you, it's going to happen in your fourth house. So fourth house, anything to do with your roots, with your family, with your living situation, with your real estate. And also it's endings as well, because it's karmic endings. and. Uh, there is a major uh, change happening in your home life, Aquarius rising sun and moon. It is going to be something to do maybe with a mother figure, you know. Um, it, it is a sudden shift and it is shifting your family dynamic uh, and, and the whole entire household as well. Maybe you guys are getting pregnant and having a new baby or adopt a new baby or your elderly mother moves in with you or elderly authority figure because they are not capable to live them uh, by themselves anymore. It could be breakthrough to understand some kind of karmic family history or ancestral roots as well. So maybe you find your biological parents or find out you are not... Uh, you were not born with the parents who raised you, you know, those kind of situation. It could actually bring a sudden change, like, all right, uh, some kind of uh, earthquake is happening in my neighborhood. I have to leave my house, you know, because it's sudden. So Uranus is earthquake trembling. So it could be that as well, some kind of, uh, you know, tornadoes, whatever, and you need to leave. Uh, you need to give up wherever you lived before and you're changing your property. Maybe you're selling your property and because somebody going to offer an unexpected good price for it and you didn't want to sell, but because you get almost double of the price because they're building a hospital over there, you are ready to sell it. Uh, so revolution and revolutionary approaches to property and real estate you might going to get a real estate license and that's going to be the breakthrough for you. But definitely the change of the, the family dynamic, it's coming to you and, and it's big. Uh, if you are losing a parental figure because fourth house is funeral and, uh, and uh, you know, endings as well, it could be a blessed ending for someone who maybe Uranus is Alzheimer. Uranus could be neurological issues like, like anything to do with uh, stroke, Alzheimer, ALS, dementia. So if it is like that, that is a blessing ending most likely. And, you know, like a relief for even the person who 
who did the transition in your life. So Black Moon Lilith in your eighth house. So yes, definitely you get the water hoses. It's draining. Eight house, anything to do with inheritances, anything to do with taboos, pregnancies. Yes, so you are capable to actually bring in a new uh, member of family which with pregnancies. You are capable to, to have some kind of inheritance. Uh, you know, you might want to, to actually uh, hire a, a therapist, uh, a psychologist or a, a sex therapist, for example, to, to heal the family dynamic, dynamic with your significant other, uh, dynamic in your relationship. Um, if you would like to get a mortgage, uh, definitely it could be really great. Real estate pays out well, for sure. And then, Ceres in the 12th house, it has to do anything with your subconscious afterlife. You know, Ceres uh, 12th house is eternal life. It's the eternal womb. It's the afterlife nurturing so yes it could be a mother figure who is passing away or substitute mother figure uh, who is actually willing to still come back and somehow messaging through um, you know through your dreams 12 house um, but also because of Ceres is nurturing it could be like you know what there is a lot of hidden aspect in my in my love life, in my sex life, and we need to hire a psychologist, as I said, and solve those issues. The traumas could be healed, like childhood traumas. It is coming up right now, and and it's healed. And you know, you can uh, you maybe you couldn't get pregnant because of some kind of uh, childhood trauma, and you go to hip hypnosis, and that trauma comes up, and you're capable to face the beast, and you heal yourself, and you get pregnant. Mars in the second house, second house, anything to do with uh, money and the earned money. And, you know, 12 house also could be money because um, it's from foreign force, uh, foreign, foreign shores. Oh, my God. Like I'm dyslexic or whatever. This, this, uh, this spoken, whatever, how do you call it? Okay, so foreign shores. Yes. And... Um, and it could bring in money and or you can actually buy a boutique hotel in a foreign country, faraway country or start an Airbnb in a faraway country because of, you know, and it brings in money. A retreat, because Mars in second house in Pisces, it could be a retreat center, a retreat center for people who wants to do mushrooms, ayahuasca, plant medicine, um, and, and, you know, you're going to facilitate the healing uh, facility for them. So it, it could be the healing for them. It could be really amazing. And it's a good investment as well. Uh, your financial matters going to become activated because Mars is in your second house. And as I said, you can invest in, you know, Mars is metal, finding metal in water. So maybe on a beach um, when you are walking on the shore you find some diamond rings or it could be also uh, searching with metal detector on the you know like a lot of people does that and actually some of them making a really good living out from that uh, or or it could be because of uh, Mars's matter, but also the warrior but uh, Pisces anything to do with uh, with artistic ability, you might going to invest in art and that's going to actually preserve your money. Um, yeah. It could be also, if you want to have a surgery actually, and you need to be out of work, this is the right time because not only you will have the foundation for it, but if you have to have an eye surgery or a jaw surgery, it could be good for that. All right, what else can I say, Aquarius? You know, let's go to herbs, uh, lavender. Uh, it would be great because of uh, it is uh, creating a peaceful home environment. So because it's happening in your fourth house of house, uh, you know, like even plant lavenders, if you are living in a, a tropical uh, climate right now you are capable to do that it's not winter 
And then drink lavender tea could be also really good. Basil is attracts prosperity and, you know, uh, holy basil, the Tulsi as well, but basil itself and bay leaves, like, like um, for example, burn bay leaves in your house to attract prosperity and get away with the, the, the evil energy because of the change is coming in your family dynamic and you don't want to have imbalance there. Moonstone, because Moonstone belongs from the fourth house, it belongs from cancer, it belongs from real estate, and it's harmonizing the connection between you and your, your home and your family members. So Moonstones would be great for you as well. And addiction, additional aspect over here, you know, Fennel could be really good. Fennel is also... Um, uh, helping with digestion as well so so black moon lilith in virgo virgo anything to do with stomach and digestion so it relieves anxiety and facilitating health and wellness in your digestion tract so fennel could be really good for you and yeah nectar nectar because of saracen capricorn could be uh, great for um it supports vitality, it uh, cleans your blood, it's getting rid of any kind of allergy as well, it's good for allergy, um, but it's giving you resilience, so nurturing you. And let's see if I have, I'm going to give you an Amazon quote, the ornament of a house is the friends who frequent it or family members, I would say as well, but friends as well, because, you know, you cannot choose your family, but you can choose your friends and they can become your family. So the ornament of a house is the friends who frequent it. Be careful who is, who do you invite into your house because the energy is very important, especially right now. You don't want to create chaos and, and, uh, and you know, disharmony. So, Careful. All right, let's see and change the background for Pisces rising sun and moon. This is the last sign. All right, my beautiful Pisces, here you are. So it's going to happen. Uh, this is Uranus and Jupiter conjunction in April 2021st in your third house in Taurus. Okay, third house. Anything to do with communication, short distance traveling, younger siblings. It is your neighborhood. It is your nearby community. It is also your vehicle as well. Your skill-based study as well. Your younger siblings. So let's see what's going to happen over here. So Taurus is an earth sign and it's a fixed sign. Jupiter, Uranus conjunction there could actually disrupt your neighborhood. Either it could be because of Jupiter, could be some celebrity moves in the neighborhood and everybody is crazy about that. It could be some kind of uh, uh, the community or the surround or community. There could be some kind of uh, protest going on around you guys, you know, nearby your neighborhood somehow or protest against your HOA, you know, like it could be as well, because Jupiter could be the leader, and rebel against the rules, because you want to be unconventional, you want to be unconventional, you want to do something innovative, and you want to get rid of the old structure, or the old uh, leaders as well, and that could be that. And... Uh, Jupiter is blessing, it's Santa Claus, it's a gift, it's abundance, it's generosity, Uranus is, as I said, innovative technology. So it could be you are blessed because of the neighborhood going to have some kind of new technology, new gate system, anything with technology, which is going to bring in abundance or it's going to bring, um, you know, like... Um, prosperity in or, or luxury it's luxurious so so somehow maybe you're going to have a whole entire parking lot uh, capable to to um, um, park the teslas of the neighborhood and you know like charge them so they're gonna build something like that nearby you um 
Yes, so definitely something to do with energy. Maybe you're going to be permitted to have a solar energy on your roof or the whole neighborhood has to change for solar energy. Um, it could be some kind of disruption also, like nearby neighborhood or, or you know, community could have some kind of uh, natural disaster, Taurus, Uranus, Jupiter is expanding it. So you can be in the eye of a hurricane or eye of a tornado or something like that, but hopefully it's not the issue there. So it's going to trine with Black Moon, Lilith in Virgo and Ceres in Capricorn, and it's going to uh, sextai with Mars in your sign in Pisces. So, all right. So as I said, there is some kind of new innovative ideas in communication because Jupiter Uranus is in your communication sphere. Sudden changes with skill-based studies, you might going to have the money to, or somebody is very generous to pay your schools, or actually somebody is very generous to to set up for you an online school where you can teach and get money or, or do your website and you are actually um, bringing in uh, more clients and expensive um, who are supporting you, who are looking up on you, but definitely breakthrough in learning and a new kind of study methods as well. You can have unexpected short trip spices and, um, and you know, um, it will bring in experiences what you never had before. And actually with that experience, you are bringing abundance into your life. Uh, you're going to have a lot of new ideas, anything to do with writing and speaking or, or writing a book and publishing it. It would be amazing. Um, you know, your, your sibling might going to unexpectedly actually uh, visit you. So it could be that one as well. Black Moon Lilith in your seventh house. Seventh house is legal matters, significant others, and business partnership alliances. So there is some kind of hidden issue or some kind of power dynamic in partnership. So if you have a business partner or if somebody is helping you to or paying your school, that person might want to have 20% out from your teaching, you know, like so careful what you are signing and who you are actually entering contracts because seventh has anything to do with contracts as well. So whatever you sign, be careful with it a little bit. Address the taboos. Address the taboos in relationship. Make sure you are communicate clearly. Make sure you are heard and you are listening your significant others. That's for sure. But, you know, it's a trine, so it's a blessed energy. Trine is always uh, granted, and it's always a blessing in our life. So relationship dynamic actually going to be unconventional, but really, really uh, giving you a zest, and, and you're going to love that. Um, and then Sarah's going to be in your 11th house in Capricorn. 11th house is your social network. It is anything to do with money from your career. It's long-term goals. You know, Ceres is very nurturing, but structured. So, so you're going to get a lot of nurturing within your friendship and your social network. So they're going to support you. They want to, they're going to look up on you, giving you great ideas. You might going to actually, uh, actually you can create an application or you will be one of the person who wants to make a new social media uh, um application like Facebook or MeV or whatever, you can actually create one, a new, a new social media group, a social media network, actually, social network, yes. Um, so you are capable to do something with, with a non-profit. So you are actually invent some kind of non-profit, which is anything to do with environment, anything to do teaching the Children, for example, um, and it's going to sex time, Mars in Pisces, so it could be something teaching art for children who are underprivileged, uh, helping uh, people who, who are have addiction, getting rid of addiction. So yeah, you can do those kind of things with nonprofits. Uh, uh, maybe a surfing camp and it's for children who are on the street and who are uh, 
uh, without any kind of uh, adult supervision and and you are just you know like helping them to get them off from the street so so something like that could be really good but you know something to do with growth through community involvement and something to to grow through group project um and you know balancing out your personal goals and the collective needs as well so so you know you cannot give from an empty well so if you are not fulfilled not relaxed uh, and if you are constantly tired you are not capable to give anymore so first you go in you know what i say usually when you travel they say put the the mask on yourself at the airplane right because otherwise you're going to get you faint and you're not capable to help your children so this is the thing you put that on yourself first so you are capable to and you can keep helping others especially you Pisces because you know that is the most generous and and mother Teresa sign so um yeah all right anything to do with social activism environmental activism as well because of um Third house is community. Uranus and Taurus could be something to do with environment. So environmental activism could be really, really good, especially because Mars is in your sign and it could be an activist, uh, something to do with the underprivileged. It could be Mother Gaia, right? The way we uh, don't respect it. Or, uh, or you know, like April is the 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 earth day so you might going to create a clean up the beach or clean up the city kind of uh, um, you know like a s s group project okay what else can i say over here you're gonna be definitely more active being a pisces but you're going to be the advocate for others advocate for the underprivileged uh, that it's going to be uh, a lot of creative impulses because Mars and Pisces, it's, it's uh, you know, very, it's impulsive, but creativity. So good ideas to, to write a book. Actually, your intuition going to be amazing as well because it's sextile with Uranus. Uranus is the crown chakra. Jupiter also spiritual beliefs rules you as well. So definitely you're going to be, in Sagittarius and Pisces going to be actually, and Taurus really, um, uh, you know, affected by this Uranus and Jupiter conjunction and also Aquarius because obviously Uranus rules Aquarius. So those are the four signs. Okay, so what kind of herbs I would uh, recommend you? You know, anything to do with mental clarity and uh, concentration could be the go-to cola. It is almost like uh, ginkgo biloba. Uh, so... So it's great for clarity. Uh, blue topaz, anything to do with aquamarine for you, Pisces, anything to, because it suits your mind and it's good for traveling as well. Good for communication. Because of the blue, the aquamarine blue is good for your throat chakra, turquoise, blue topaz. It's a, a great for your third chakra. It's it's communication because it's going to happen in your third house. Um, so what else? Uh, so if we are going to, to herbs, anything to do with time uh, uh, and uh, Mercurian herbs, because the third house is Mercurian herbs, uh, but also rosemary as well could be because Uranus, Jupiter, Uranus is mental clarity, right? It is uh, collecting, it is the Akasic record, it's collecting uh, information from, from the universe, so rosemary could be really great for that as well and gemstones anything to do with uh, well lapis lazuli because you are pisces and uh, lapis lazuli is good for jupiterian energy or it could be amethyst as well for you guys because it's definitely provides spiritual protection for you and you always need spiritual prof uh, protection, especially because you are a very compassionate person and intuitive. Okay, so Rumi says, raise your words, not your voice. It is rain that grows flower, not thunder. 
So if you get frustrated, you know, with Uranus in your in your uh, third house and you are rebelling against something and it is sextile with uh, Mars in Pisces, but you know, uh, it is an assertive energy. It is saying it beautifully, not your voice, your words. So be beautifully polished and, and make sure you are actually helping others to grow with your knowledge and with your spiritual insight all right guys thank you so much for listening liking subscribing and sharing my videos if you loved it please comment below you know the drills the algorithm only going to recognize me if it's commented like and subscribe to my channel thank you so much for listening i'm coming up with the new video soon bye for now